Really get to a the individual as well. Yeah. We know what product is.
All right. I know we didn't totally finish, but I want to keep pushing forward and we can do more. Okay? I don't want us to get stuck on the same problem for too long. So I'm going to implement it. How many of us felt like we got a for loop working? Four? Okay. How many of us got the for each working? A similar number for both. Okay. Hey, Jenny, you're right on time. Okay, so let's do a for loop, and I'm gonna give you guys another five minutes or three minutes to convert it to a for each loop, right? Because for each loops, I saw somebody return out of a for each. We can't use return in for each. For each is only for its side effects. We're not returning the for each. It's just like a loop to go specifically through an array. That's all for each does. But let's start with our function. I know we know to say the word function. Uh, I'm going to say product. This is going to take in an array. That's our input. So we got to keep track of the numbers as we go through it. We know that, right? Because how else would we remember? So we have to start with let uh, output. We have to figure out what's a good number to start with. Why? You don't know why. Well, if we don't know why, then we're probably not choosing the right number because we we've got to be able to defend our reasoning. Diana, why? Totally. So just like when we're adding, we want to use zero because zero plus anything is anything. When we're multiplying, we want to use one because one times anything is anything. Questions on that? Good. So every time you write a piece of code, you should be able to say why. And if you don't know why, the code's not going to be right. Almost always. So, okay, output, we're saying let output be one. We know we got to do a for loop. Let's do it. We go four. First argument of a for loop is Kelly. The starting point. Okay. So let's do. Let's start at the beginning of this array. And since arrays, the 
first index of an array is zero, so it makes sense for us to start our i at zero in this situation. Okay, the next part of the for loop is Krishna. Yeah, so when should we end on this one? Okay. Array.length is what kind of data type? Number, right. So we've seen now a few times with for loops. We don't need, we're using arrays. For this problem, we don't always need an array involved. This is just a number. Yep. Okay. Last thing in a for loop, Espina. I meant Karina. But that's good. You're too fat. I got like two C's and they're like right here. I'm so sorry. I do. I, I'm sure you guys believe me. I know you guys. Uh, I, I know the difference between the two of you. Okay, Christina, I'm just going to keep going with you. You said. Uh, so it's the step towards the right? Yep, the step towards the end condition. So, uh, Karina, what's a good step for this? I plus plus, which is the same as if I wrote I plus one. One plus I, I plus one, I plus equals one, right? They're all the same. It's math. There's literally math going on there, and it's variable reassignment. Okay, cool. Let's get to the meat. The meat, the turkey meat. Okay, here we go. So what do we want to do as we touch each element of the array? What can we do? Uh, Nuleen, you haven't spoken yet. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, for those of you who can't hear over a jack hammer, Nuleen said we are going to be reassigning the value of output each time to itself multiplied by the element in the array, which is array at i. Questions on this? No? Abed, what's next? Yeah. So we got to return our output, and we want to do it after the for loop because we want to get through the entire array, right? So let's give it a shot. One, two, three, second six. Shazam! We got the six. Questions on how we solve this? Yeah. Great question. So if we did output times r at i, we would have, let's say, one times an r i, let's say one, so we have one. Okay, so nothing bad happened there. And then uh, our uh, i gets incremented, right? And so now i is also one. And so we go one times two, just two. We iterate, we hit one and increment our i again. i is now two. And it says output is one times three. Uh-oh, we missed, we lost one, right? And we lost it because we didn't capture that value. This is like if a tree falls in the woods, like does anyone hear it, if there's a mine, I have something like that. I don't really remember how it goes. Right, but it's the same thing. It's like, hey, if we don't capture what's going on here, and it's the same in some form, it's just something that happened. Let's both forget about it, let's move on. You don't have to call, I'm not gonna call. Right? Does that make does that help clear that? All right, cool. Let's I'm gonna give like five more minutes to do it with four each. You
specifically the land of the prophets. Do you get it? What happens? So you get another bit. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Sorry? Oh, well, then that would do it. So there is, so there is something. <laughs> My grandmother, I think, is a name. Can you take vitamins and iron? All right, I'm gonna keep going. We gotta keep going. Okay, so. We definitely, some of us are still confused on our four each. So, let's go over. So we've got our function. Oh my God, I hate this construction. Function, and we've got, it's gonna be called product. And uh, sorry, are there any snacks? No, uh, a couple. What? Hmm. Um. Yeah, oh, we'll figure that out soon. Uh, okay, so just like before, we've got to keep track of this output. This is going to be what we end up changing. We only have one, so a for each is an array method. It's something we can only call on an array. What's it do? Well, it iterates through the array, kind of like a for loop, we can, and an with each element, it calls a callback function with that element. 
Now we don't use it for returns, just like we don't use the for loop just to return. It's the for each is purely for iteration. We're using it for a side effect. So it's kind of like if if you, whenever you drink alcohol, if you get really happy, like, and you drink a lot, you might not be using it just to get drunk and poison yourself. You're using alcohol for its side effect, which is that it makes you feel happy, right? You're not like, ah, because like, it is kind of poisoning ourselves, right? Like if you drink it, you like literally just die. <laughs> right, yeah, it, that's, they have the expression, take your poison. Right, but we don't. People don't drink alcohol. I mean, I don't drink at all. But people don't drink alcohol because they want to poison themselves and kill themselves. They want to drink it because of the side effect. Right. So same with a four each loop. So we're not interested in getting like the return value of this callback function. We just want it to have some sort of side effect, and we get to control its side effect. You know, if we write a little whiskey product, we can change the uh, output variable. If we write a tequila product, we get to change and maybe an array. We're changing something that's already been defined within our scope. So let's go for it. So we go array dot for each. And now inside of this is the callback function. This is where we make a function. I'm going to make it an E S6 and I'm going to make it anonymous. So I have to write where I'm gonna pass in an argument, and that argument is going to be L, because that's what for each does. Crispina. So you're, you're saying that it's anonymous because there's not a name before the inner argument. Mm-hmm. I could also write this in ES5 and just go function. That makes it more clear what this is, but I'm not naming it. I'm so, yes. Yeah, that's okay. Um, most people aren't writing functions in ES5 even. They're, a lot of them are writing in ES6. But for the type of work we have been doing, kind of like ES5 could make more sense. It's also like a bit more clear what things are. Dealer's choice, all right in ES5, hell. So this takes in an element, Oops. and this element is going to be each element of the array. Just like any function, I make curly braces, enter. Right, we got a function as an argument now for each. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So, what do we want to happen with each element? Well, I'm pretty sure we want to multiply the value of every element with our output. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to say I got L, and I'm going to times it by output. Uh, and I'm going to do output over here because I got to still save that value. So the reason that this function has access to output is because when this function was made and brought into existence, when we begat this function, we already had a variable called output available to it. So just like when you're born, hopefully you still have access to your grandparents, but that's because they already existed within the family. You're the new one in the family, right? And so you get to have everyone else that already exists within your family is still in the family. Someone else's family, they're not your family, right? You weren't born into their family. But this function has been born into this function, and so it has access to all of its family, okay? So we've got output times element, you uh, reassign the value of that, and then after our whole for each loop is run, uh, now we can make our return. We can say output. And that's it. Let's run it. Still works. Questions on that? Expand. No? Karina? Yeah? Okay.
Kelly? Diana? You make it? How about Jenya? Okay. Do we want to do more warm up? Yes, something. Okay. Daniel's oh, okay, we'll do it. We'll do the next step here. Um, I want. Ooh, trying to think of exactly like a good problem with math. Okay, I'm just gonna randomly. We got five minutes. Uh, write a write a function called um, index times element. Write a function. Eh, it's gonna uh, take in and array and returns an array with every element multiplied by its index. Use map uh, example of index and say one, two, three. I should output zero, two, six. Okay, go for it. Thank you. 
Our genealogy, most of it, just read it. I wrote it out. All right, I'm going to help us get started. We are, some of us are stuck, and when we get stuck, what should we do? Well, we should look at, we should start hitting Google, or we should start asking questions, or definitely shouldn't give up and stop working on it. We should constantly keep going. Uh, so I will get you started, though. So we'll say function. Uh, let's spell it. Times index takes in an array. Oops. And the map where it's going to return an array, right? Kind of talked about that yesterday for about for a little while. Uh, so we're going to want to return whatever that array is, right? We're going to end up using map. So I'm going to use return. So grab our array and call map on it. Uh, map. And map takes in a callback function. So I'm going to write function. And this function, we, we know it's going to call it with element. Now we have an optional argument that this can take, and that can also take i. And what that will do this map will pass not only the element in, but it will also pass the index that it's at. All right? Give you another little few minutes.
then let's talk about it uh, so we've decided we've got most of this here we've got two arguments that we want to multiply together and they're inside of this function and because they're inside of a function and we care about the return value of that function we have to return what's the element times i So we say times index at one, two, three. Exam. Questions. How does it, oh that that's a is that what your question is too? Oh okay. Uh, how does it know? So all of these like pretty much all of these array methods have a optional second argument, which is the index. It's just, it's something that's, that's built in. We don't usually need it, because this is kind of like a silly problem, right? But we can use it, it's okay. Um, but yeah, for each has that too. So does map, I think so does filter. They all have an optional <laughs> index if you want it. Just built in. Christina. So, uh, going back to for each, not needing our turn, mm -hmm. um, that, that was what you two were talking about for the side effects of the thing. Yeah. Um, and this doesn't have that side effect thing. Um, That's right. So, I, I'm not sure how to kind of remove that side effect thing. Well, that's okay. Uh, if you want to just memorize that for each is the only one that doesn't need a return. That's okay with me. Uh, if we want to think about it in more code terms, let's see. So we can look at, at like map and we can see that we're not changing any kind of variables that already exist within the scope. Is that fair to say, right? We don't have some output array. We don't have some sum number. We don't have something that we're messing around with. And so that's, so we're not using it as a side effect. Right. Whenever we're using for each, we always are going to be messing around with something else. So if you're like, is this really returning anything or am I just messing around? That should kind of help. If that doesn't, just memorize. For each, we're not using a return. In fact, it just actually completely ignores a return if you try to use it. I know that's like, I don't know if that's what you want to hear. I want to hear the answer. Well, then it is what you want to hear. Uh, any other questions on this? Okay, so let's do another one. You guys want to do another another one with this kind of thing? Okay, so I am going to uh, write write a function. That takes in an array of words. I want every other word to be capitalized and lowercase. So it should alternate. Use that. So I'm going to say. I'm going to call it uh, switch gauge or something. 
and it's going to take in this array that says like hello class how are you and the output that I'm looking for should be an array that says hello class Cool. All right.
All right, let's talk about it a bit. I know we're not all done, but we gotta keep going. We gotta work on our speed when it comes to solving problems. I know it's like, ugh, speed, but it is a thing. Uh, so let's start. So we go function, yikes. And we have switch case. It's in an array. Now we know we're gonna use map because we were given that hint. And we know that we're gonna use map and whatever array we get back from that is we're gonna to wanna to end up returning it. You get it? Great way to go. So we're gonna say return array dot map. And now it's time to write a function. Write a callback function. So we can write an ES5, ES6, dealer's choice. I'll write it in five for right now just so it's really clear that this is a function. Uh, and this function takes in two arguments, or well, it takes in for sure one, the element, and since I know I'm going to be doing something with every other, sounds like an index thing to me, right? It really depends on what index I'm on. So I can go, all right, I'm going to also pass in i, open up my function, and now i got to think. Uh, so if, let's see, let's, let's see in English what we would do. So it's like, so at the zeroth one, we want caps, right? At the at number at the one index, we want lowercase. At two, we want caps. At three, we want lowercase. Seems like every time we have an odd index, we want a lowercase, and every time we have an even index, we want an uppercase, right? Is that a fair pattern? Okay. So if we know that, let's just write it almost like so. If and we got our i, because that's the actual index. And we say i modulo 2. And so if i modulo 2, so that means if this were even, it would return 0, right? I'll, I'll be more explicit. So if it's equal to 0, or say, hang on. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to see so I can fix it later. Uh, let's say not equal to zero for fun. So this would be in the event that it's at an odd, right? I go, okay. I want to return. I want to return my element. And I want it to be lowercase. Are we still with me? So in the event that it's not that, we can make our else, and we can return the element uppercase. Cool. Let's try it out. All right, looks, looks good, it works. Questions on how we got that? Okay, should we make it sexier? Okay, so the first improvement I'm gonna look at is this, zero has a truth or falsy value. Falsy value, and one has a Truthy or falsy value? Truthy. So I could just say if I modulo 2. Because if this is 0, this will already be a falsy value. So my if statement won't run. I'll hit the else statement. So I go, all right, that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm just doing a quick if else, right? 
So I might as well use a ternary. So instead of that, I'm going to comment all this code out and rewrite it. So I'm going to return which one of the two, right? I'm always going to return it. If it's in an if here, it looks like I'm returning something. If I'm on an else, I'm returning something. And I'm not really doing logic there. All my logic is just in that if, that initial if condition. So I'm going to start off with return. And then I'm going to put my condition. So I modulo 2. So if that's true, I'm just going to do L.2 lowercase. Else L.2 lowercase. A lot slicker, right? And still works. Yeah, Johnny. I think That's fine, but you're assuming that all of our inputs are not like they're all lowercase. Yeah. So if I because I, I still would want that if I did like this, I would still want this output. But that wasn't like this specified but that's something if you were whiteboarded asked like you should clarify and ask to make sure so your answer is fine for for now questions on the uh, eric can you do it um can you do it um, on the sx but like that function element so it's the same thing with the s6 i just removed the word function and I add an arrow here. Oops. That's all. It's just an anonymous function. No problem. Can I what? Totally. Yep. Great question. He said, can I mix it? Yep. Yep. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into it. Totally fine. Karina says she did an implicit return. I'm not going to go over that right now because we're still kind of hitting the basics. But totally acceptable view. You could potentially make this all specifically one line. Like everything. All right. Questions on this? Yeah. Christina. Mm hmm. Definitely. You nailed it. Any other questions, clarifications, thoughts, questions, concerns, comments? All right. Should we do another one? Let's go up a little bit harder. This is, ugh, wish Kelly was here because it's kind of directed for her. Uh, that's directed for all of us, whatever. Um, okay. Now let's write another product. I'm going to say, write another product function, but this time use reduce. What? It's like not, it's not anything to learn. It's 
so it's like only you plug in and it does all your CSS for you. It's like you have, you can learn it on on your own if you're done, but you know, you can teach that I'd rather just don't know what the problem is because yeah. it's way more hard. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, let's go through it so we can remember what's going on here. Oh, hang on, somebody messaged me. Somebody messaged me from home about the lecture. All right, see, see you soon. Oh, they had a quip. I'll put just kidding. Um, Right. Okay. So let's get going. Let's. Get ready to rumble. Okay. So we're writing a function, right? Pretty good. Product. We've been here. We've done this before. He gave us a hint. I said we're using reduce. What does reduce take in as input? What kind of function or method is reduce? It's an array method, right? And what kind of output does reduce give us? Uh, Jenny's one number. What else? What do we can we think of any other outputs? The total. What's that? What do you mean? Okay. Hmm. Jenny's getting warmer. <laughs> right. She said so. Reduce reduces the array to whatever we want. We can make it into an object as an output, we could have an array as an output, we can have a number as an output, we can have a string as an output. Reduce is really cool, it's super, super powerful. It's also why it seems super, super confusing, is because with power comes more confusion, right? I mean, because it can do a lot more, right? For each, although we still have some confusion about it, it's just all it does is loop through an array and call the function that we pass in on every element. That's it. It doesn't do anything. It's almost, right? I can do all of its stuff with a for loop. Well, I can do all of Reduce's stuff with a for loop too, but I can't do it all with a for each loop. For, for each is just like, come on, let's get real here. Uh, so let's, we know we want to return the number, the product, so I'm gonna say return. Oops, oh, and there's people at home watching that. Uh, return, and they're hearing me say that. <laughs> I hate, I hate going live. I, I absolutely despise it, it's so uncomfortable. But anyway, um, so we say array.reduce. Hmm, interesting. Here it comes. What are the two Arguments that reduce can take in. Neely. Correct. So Neely says reduce can take in a callback and an optional initial value. Okay. Okay, so let's maybe write that down on the board. And so we have reduce takes in a callback and an initial value, right? Now here's the kicker, right? What does our callback take? Give me a letter. 
by both. both. That callback always is going to get that accumulator and current element. Mama wants it. There is no option for that. Only the initial value and reduce is option. So um, when you're saying she's, she doesn't have option. That's right. Um, you're, you're not, you don't always have, my question is you don't always have to give it um, or 
if we don't, the accumulator will be the initial value on the first call, but if we don't give it the initial value, the accumulator is the first element in the array. I'm gonna code it out, and then maybe we'll be able to make it more clear. Okay, so first things first, we gotta write this callback. All right, so I'm gonna write function, I'll, make, I'll change it to ES6 after for Eric. Uh, and this takes in an accumulator and a current element. Why is this thing still here? Are you kidding? All right, people are writing in. What is going on? I'm watching too, live from Pursue. It's already teaching them. All right, that's a shout out to Nikki and Jojo. All right, let's keep going. Uh, so, function, boy, how riveting is this if you're not here? Hi, Nikki. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, no, no one's saying anything. They're all really into it. People, uh, the president just walked in. This is really crazy. All of the presidents just walked in from at all time. <laughs> Zombie apocalypse, take cover. Let's go. Okay, let's keep going. So I've got a function here. I have an option. Now, this is a function, right? We've just made a whole function that takes in two arguments. Right? Do we see that function? This callback function? Yeah. yeah. And if I wanted to, because we're still in reduce takes in a. Oh, thanks. What do you mean by total? Mm, they're probably calling it total, but I'm gonna I'm gonna call it accumulator forever because it's accumulating throughout the whole time. And if a total to me sounds like some sort of math thing where we're creating a total, and we're not always going to be creating a specific number. So in my head, I'm gonna keep it as accumulator. I recommend you do the same, but you don't have to. Whatever works. Okay. So we could pass in an optional argument, right? For this takes in two arguments. I could say something like two here if I want it, or not. Do we see that? Okay. So I have to write something with this function. So if I don't give it that initial value, my accumulator becomes the first element of my array, and my current element becomes the second element in my array. That's what this defaults to. Now for product, I don't care because I don't, I just don't care. I want to pr multiply all those numbers anyway. It doesn't matter to me. So I'm just gonna return, because this also needs to return. The return value of the callback, whatever is the result, will get carried over to become the accumulator of the next call the next element so we keep updating that accumulator we've written reduce a bunch of times on the inside of how it actually wrote right and we had this line that went accumulator equals callback accumulator per l right we've seen that line nice <laughs> I'll let you guys work that out. Um, we've kind of seen this line, right? Because we keep reassigning the value of accumulator to whatever that output of the last thing was. So, get rid of that. And let's go return our accumulator times our current element. That's it, that's all. So if we call product, um, one, two, three, four, F, uh, five. We should get 120. Yeah. So let's walk through how this is actually happening and what's going down. We go, all right, there's no initial value. On our first call, the accumulator is going to be, yikes, the first the accumulator is going to be one, the current element is going to be two. That's what the first function calls passed in. That returns one times two, right? 
that becomes the accumulator of the next call. One times two is two. Our next call to the function says the accumulator is two. The current element is three. This returns two times three. Two times three is six. And so that becomes the accumulator for the next call. And so we go six is the accumulator, four is the current element. And so we return six times four is 24. And so 24 is now the accumulator. So we go 24 times the next current element, which is five. 24 times five is 120. We return that. We go to look for the next element. There is none. We end up just returning the 120. Johnny? I don't know why you're getting crazy, but this shows how that's happening. It's referring to the element inside the array. Yep. For the next one. Perfect. Way to go. Okay. So if I pass this in, and I pass in my optional second argument to reduce, what do we expect? It means that that's the initial value. This is going to be the starting accumulator. So now my accumulator is going to be two, and my current element will be one. Right. So what will my, yeah, Johnny? Correct. Three times four. Yes. Any questions on that? Eric? Um, so your that two you have there. The Too, yeah. So is there a way to like manipulate that? Well, it gets passed into this function. So whatever we're doing in this function, so that's what it does. That's what it does. So it just starts as if we pass in this two, and then this two is the accumulator, and the current element is one. If we don't pass in that two, if one is the accumulator, the current element is two. Now. What's up? <laughs> yep. We pass in the optional initial value. This becomes the accumulator on the first call. So our accumulator is two, our current element is one. If we didn't pass it in, mama needs an accumulator. So she takes it from the first element. So the accumulator is one, the current element is two. Make sense? Cool. Okay. So, let's do another function. Do we, is this helpful? Is this, or do we want to do other stuff? Okay, I'll keep going on these. Uh, I'm going to do one and then that. With reduce? No, with that function. I will get to an object eventually then. Yeah, okay. You need another reduce? You'll get one in a minute. I want us to write a function. Oh my God. Write a func function that takes in an 
array of numbers and returns an array of only the even numbers. Use filter. And you'll see what comes next. <laughs>
You're writing the cancer.
All right, let's get back. Um, so you were asked to filter an array. So we all got this far. Sure function, we're gonna say even only, or evens only, how about? And it takes in an array. And we are gonna use filter. Filter is going to evaluate into what? Right, filter is going to evaluate into that array, into an array, and that is the array that we want to return from evens only. So I'm just going to go right away and write return array dot filter. Time to write my function. Function, this takes in the element. This is the callback function. I got to write the guts. I'm looking for elements that are even. What makes an element even? It's divisible by two. Great, thank you, Trey. So I'll say if element modulo two equal to zero, right? I'm just gonna return true or element, right? It's just I'm returning an even a positive, truthy value. Okay, else, um, am I gonna, I'll just put return false. This is, I'm looking to see if something is even or not even. What other arguments are supposed to take into it? Well, it has an optional index. Does it add I here? Same as the other one today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once I uh, filter the call, the anonymous callback function is supposed to give a condition of, of what it's actually going to filter. Let me see. Uh, yeah, so inside of our filter, that callback function, is checking for any result with that element that's going to return a truthy result. And whatever that, if it, if it does return a truthy result, our filter says, thank you very much, I'm going to keep track of that element, and it pushes it into its own output array. So all I need to do is return true or false. I could also just have literally done return element modulo 2 equal to 0. That would also let me know if that's true or false. Right, because I'm doing this if else statement, but this condition is going to evaluate to a true or false. So I could also just return element modulo two uh, equal to zero. There, Johnny. Right, like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna run it. Don't worry. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, that's what we would get. Filter filters down and gives us the elements where it was a truthy return from the callback. So if we do one, two, three, four, five, we get two, four. It's working. Very, very cool. I'm going to turn this into ES6. For Eric. Okay. Are we good with this? Awesome. So we feel we're, yeah, Nilene. Yep. What do you mean by the word con constant? Is a declaration of a variable. In ES6, you're only ever writing anonymous functions, but some of them you're assigning to the value of a variable. Every time you've ever written a function in ES6, that function has been an anonymous function, but you've given it a, a name by the giving that value as the value of a variable. That's why there's no hoisting and all that stuff. Okay, so we feel all right with filter? Great, masters of filter. Let's make our own kind of filter here a little bit. By right, let's do the same thing. So get, so write a get evens with reduce. Okay, so now you're going to be using reduce to do this. Thank you. 
so here's a little hint that I'm not saying anything doing yet, right? We've got an initial value that we can pass in, right? It's optional. But if we're trying to turn, we're going to iterate through a bunch of numbers, we're going to want to return it red. So I just want you to take a second. I'm not going to go over this. Yet. I'm going to give people a little bit more time. But uh, I've, I've seen this like so many times in the last week that I'm getting sick of it, and it needs to be addressed. It's not like a bad like no one's in trouble. I'm not mad, but like we got to fix this concept. I have an array. One, two, three. Console.log array dot push four, uh, I'm gonna say seven. What's going to log to the screen? Sorry? See, we have no idea. That's what we've got. It returns the return value of the method push 
is the length of the array. Okay, and it's always gonna be that in this language. In Ruby, you actually get the array, which is what would be significantly nicer. Ruby is a beautiful language, I recommend learning it. Uh, uh, but for JavaScript, if we use the return value of push for anything, always it's gonna be the length of the array. I see people do it constantly. We gotta fix that habit. Pop, if I were to pop here, if I got rid of the seven and I pop, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get the popped element, three, right? Uh, We get the popped element, but in a, and in shift, it's the same kind of thing, right? Pop shift, we get whatever we've removed. Unshift and push, the return value of these is the length of the array, okay? Never, ever forget that. It will help you guys a lot. See that bug constantly. Christina. You should say the length of the array once you're yeah, that is what it is. I mean, it's mutated the array, so push mutates. So, yeah, but to be more specific even, it's the array after it's been mutated that length. Totally. Good confirmation of understanding. All right, are we good? All right, let's get back to reduce. On your own, yeah. Or with a partner, whatever you do. Alex, contiguous sum. Uh, yeah, just in general. Does it need dupes? With the sets? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll work that in. Because I got to start entering into objects. That was a request that Jenny asked for too. But now we're doing Kelly's reduced. Yeah, so it's the 
All right, let's hit this one. We can try again in a minute. Ready? So, sorry about that. Okay, so here we go. Gonna remove this, it's not our function. We're gonna write function. Oh, let's finally do we get six. Let's try it. Const get evens. And it's gonna take in an array. Shazam, right? Okay. Know that whatever we we know we want to get the evens, we know we're using reduce. We know that whatever comes out of reduce is what we want to return at the end. Is that a fair statement? It's kind of been the pattern of the day. Okay. So we go array dot reduce. Takes in two elements, two things, right? A callback and an initial value, right? So my initial value is going to be an empty array because that's what I'm going to want my output eventually to be. And my callback, let's write that. So function. This takes in two arguments, accumulator, turn L. Right? Are we good with how everything's set up? Johnny. No. No. I mean, why, why? But I want to use this array. I want reduce to do all the work. My reduce is going to act as filter. Why don't we use filter? Great question. Probably should in real life. But if we can do it with reduce, we really are starting to understand how reduce works. Christina. That was, we weren't using reduce. We were writing our own version of reduce. So that was kind of different. We were actually writing the method reduce. This is using reduce. The use of reduce is always different. Is that? Okay. All right. So our initial value is our empty array. So our accumulator on our first call is what? Is an empty array, right? Mama wants. She's been given an empty array. She's going to use it. She's very resourceful, right? And our current element is going to be what on the first call? Yeah, the first element in the array, the zero at index. That almost got unplugged. Okay. 
So we can say if, and we got to check. We want to check that current element to see if it's even or odd, right? So we say if current element modulo 2 is equal to 0, what would this mean? That it's even, right? And if it's even, what do we want to do? Do we care if it's even? Yeah. When, where, where do we want to put it? Yeah, we want to put it in our accumulator. Accumulator.push current element. Now, whether or not we push it in or not, we want to still return the accumulator so we have an accumulator on the next call. So you're always going to be returning your accumulator in some way. You've either changed your accumulator and you've returned it, or you haven't changed your accumulator and you've returned it. Push mutates the array. So I'm here just going to write return my accumulator. So whether or not I pushed it, I still want that accumulator to continue on. So here when I go get evens, and I pass in an array, one, two, three, make it a little bit more fun, four, five, get my array, two, four. Questions? Questions, thoughts, concerns, cares, worries, dreams. Johnny, a dream? Oh. Anything. That's next. You're, you're wrong. Anything. <laughs> Christina. What do you mean by the scope of it? Because mm -hmm. uh, that's the return value of my callback. Does that, does that make sense? Oh, great. Okay. Kelly. Yeah, how about I walk us through what's happening? Is that cool? All right. Uh, We're going to erase this. Are we good with this? Are we done with that? Yeah. Okay, we're going to start off with our accumulator. It's going to be an empty array. Are we okay with how that happened? Because it was the initial value, right? Our current element is going to be the number one. This is what gets passed in to our callback function. And it says, if current element 1 modulo 2 equals 0, what is 1 modulo 2? 1, we don't know. We know it's not 0. All right, it is 1. Uh, and then, so we don't do that, right? We don't go inside of our statement. But instead, we just return our accumulator. If we remember, accumulator equals all that. Of accumulator right now. This is what's going on behind the scenes. That's the magic, right? So, current element becomes two. We make our next call, and our accumulator is still the empty right. We go great. Hey, current element modulo two. Are you zero? Yes. So let's go into our else. And let's push into our accumulator the number two. And then let's return that accumulator. So now we have an accumulator, the array with two in it, and our current element becomes three. And we say, hey, current element modulo two, is that equal to zero? Nope. So we're just going to return our accumulator. Current element gets changed to the next element in the array. And we say, hey, 4 modulo 2 equals 0. I think so. Let's go into that if statement. Let's push 4 into our accumulator. 
So now we have an array of two to four, and we're going to return, right? We know this is the accumulator for the next amount, so this gets becomes five. And we say, hey, five modulo two to zero. Nope. Let's just return our accumulator. And then and then our reduce goes, hey, there's no more elements. I'm done. So returns our accumulator, we get two four. Cool. All right. When I say cool, I made other questions. So that's really what that means. Yeah, go for it. Um, in my, my code, I, I have um, current, let's say this is just current element. I have current element and ABC position description. You're going to have trouble. Yes. Yeah, no. Why is it? This is the order. Whoever wrote reduce made it, so that's the order. Yes. Accumulator is starts with an A, first letter in the alphabet. It's the first argument. That's how you remember it. I guess. I or you can just remember either one. If you need a mnemonic to remember stuff, make a mnemonic. Right? A mnemonic is like a little thing you do to help you remember. Um, I don't have a good mnemonic to remember how what a mnemonic is, but you can also just remember either one. Okay, so now let's do a, another one. Let's write a function. Function that takes in a two. I don't know how to spell dimensional. Sorry. Dimensional, maybe array. Uh, yeah, all right, what show off? Come on. <laughs> uh, so, write a function that takes in a two dimensional frequent. It takes in a matrix. I know how to spell that. Uh, each inner array is made up of two elements. Take these elements, a key and value in an object, use, reduce. So what's that look like? I'm going to say make into object, and it's going to say hello. Corey, uh, hang on, there should be another red. Hello, Corey. Age, oh, this should also be another red, I'm sorry. This is a little confusing to write inside here. Age, 100, okay. This output should be uh, it's going to be like, hello, Corey, age 100. Cool? Use reduce. Very, very similar concepts to what we did last time. Let's see if I can write it.
All right, all right, all right. Let's do a thing that's going to help us here a little bit. See if we can make a couple connections. We're having a little bit of difficulty with our objects. Uh, okay. I make an object. How do I add a key to say banana? How can I do that? How can I set a key value pair into my object? Yeah. OBJ at banana. I'm just gonna say Dan. We gotta give this a value. We want to set it inside of our object. So I'm gonna call it yell. Okay? So now what's our object? Down here, what's our object now? So the key is um, the banana and then the value is the bell. Yep, so it's ban yell. This now has that, right? Uh, this is what I'm doing. Right, this is we have an object that's empty. We set a key into the object to this value. This is now the object. If I want to get yell out of this object, I would go object. And just like in an array, when we key in at an index, the index is the key in the array. So for this, for an object where we don't have set of numbers, we just go key at and, and this outputs, yeah. What's the matter? Chris 
spin it. The bottom line here is saying that if you key into the value of the fan, you're going to get the up output. I'm going to get the assigned value yeah. from that key. Yes. So the, the top, the difference between the second line and the last line is that we're assigning those in the second one, and the last one, we're actually getting an output. Correct. So as Christina is saying, this is a setter, this is a getter. We're getting that method, we're getting that value at that key, we're setting that value at that key. Okay? All right, another five minutes on this one. So let's try to think of a way to separate these things. This is your current element. It makes this double quote, but this is the second one. On the right Let's go through it. Okay. Yeah. So comment this out. Got our function. Make into object. We're passing in some kind of matrix. We've decided that we're returning whatever comes out of our reduce, right? That's kind of the point of what we're doing with the reduce. 
So I'm going to throw up the return. Matrix.reduce. This takes in callback and, and an optional initial value. So my callback, I'm going to write in is 6 this time, even though Eric's not here. And I'm going to say accumulator, current element. Right? This is an anonymous function. Should look hopefully familiar. If not, let's talk about it. Uh, second argument that I'm passing in to reduce is I'm going to use an empty object because that was kind of the goal. That's the output is I want that. If we look, we're like, hey, this is what we wanted, right? If I'm only going to be returning whatever I come out of reduce, better start it with an object because I don't see an object anywhere else. Great. So let's think about what our current element is right now. What's our accumulator? Our accumulator is this. What's our current element? Correct. This is the first element in our array. So if that's what we got and we want to make hello the key, well, how could I get hello from this array? Okay, right. So if I said current element at zero, I would have the word hello. Yes? Okay. And if I want to set this hello as a key, then I can go accumulator at that key. Right? We still with me on that? Okay, and I want to assign it something because I, I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not interested in getting anything from this object. I'm just interested in setting things into this object. So I have the assignment operator, and I got to get a value. My current element we established is this array. How do I get Corey out of this array? Yeah, current element of one. So I'll say, all right, current element. At one. That looks pretty good. So, what do I need to return from this? Do I care? Why do I need it? Yeah, I need to return the accumulator so that I keep passing this object on to the next element in the array, right? So I go return accumulator and I test my code. Ta da! We got it. Uh oh. Yep. Because accumulator is an empty object, and I wish to set the key of hello, uh, key of hello into that empty object. Johnny. I don't know. Wait, there's no pushing here. I'm setting. Okay. What was the question? Was setting? This is shorter way of putting it. Uh, no. This is how we set things into an object. Always, we have our object. We key into it at the key, and we assign it to the value. I don't. I might be misunderstood. Mr. I don't know the longer way you're referring to. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, Diane. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our, our accumulator is is the name for our object. If I were wanting to be creative, and I could, I mean, this doesn't actually have to be the word accumulator. All right, this could be like an object. I'd prefer if we continue to write a simulator because I'd like us to stay consistent. Chris Bina. Uh, so would it be um, the thinking about the matrix if they don't understand what, where is the matrix that we're using? Right here. So that's the, that's the matrix because it's an array of an array? Yep. 
Perfect. Any other questions on this one? Neely? Uh, we entered under the assumption and agreement that each element, each array element inside was going to only have two elements. If we didn't have that agreement, we would have to have figured out a different way, but we wouldn't have known necessarily what we want to be the key value then. This is a fictionalized example. That's a fair point though. Any other outstanding questions all right so let's i mean we've been working for like three hours let's take a break let's have a little lunch when do you guys want to get back like one or i mean two or 145 i don't care what all right, we'll do it at two, whatever, because that's 15 minutes from now anyway. If you don't want to come in at two, that's okay, right? This is completely optional. Yeah, we'll just keep it like regular. But if you don't, if you want to go longer, if you want to go short, that's fine. I'll probably come back in at some point. I can field questions, but I probably won't. I'll pump too much information until two. Okay, it's completely optional. It will all be recorded, although I think I'm gonna stop recording for right now. Now I'll just leave it recording, whatever. I'm not using my computer. No, whatever. Actually, that might change it. Oh well. I'll stop the recording. I just don't want them to share my screen.